I think that games about programming are a lot of fun. But I am a programmer, so I would say that, wouldn't I? Hmm. There's something inherently satisfying about watching little robots run around in perfect synchronization. But in my heart of hearts, I do recognize that these games are niche. They tend to be a little dry, a little abstract, and hella challenging. But that's what makes Autonauts so refreshing. In this game, writing code is dead simple. In fact, you don't actually write code at all. Instead, you push the big red record button on your robot and then perform a series of actions. The robot will follow you around and watch everything you do. And then when you hit play, the robot will repeat them. This is a really intuitive way of programming because the code is concretely tied to your actions rather than abstractly tied to things like numbers or registers or functions. And this only works because the player and the robots are mechanically symmetrical. You can do everything the robots can do and vice versa. You can move, pick something up, use it and put it back down. You can also store and retrieve items from your backpack. This moveset manages to stay so small because the actions are context sensitive. If you drop something on a blueprint, you'll start building it. But if you drop something on a workbench, you'll start crafting. And if you drop turf on soil, you'll plant it. In fact, most of the gameplay involves picking things up from one location and then dropping them down somewhere more useful. To help smooth this along, the game uses agriculture as a metaphor. It's obvious that you use the axe on a tree and then you bring the log to the chopping block because that's just how trees work. This is called piggybacking, when your rules lean on common sense knowledge that the player already has. So, your robots can copy your actions, which is cool, but it would be cooler to copy a concept and then apply that concept to a variety of different situations. And there's actually two ways the game lets you generalize your programs. The first is to alter the robot's search range. Some actions, like picking up an item off the floor, involve a search instruction where the robot tries to find an item of that type within the provided area. By altering that area, you can take a robot that picks up one log and generalize it into a robot that picks up all the logs in your forest. But that wouldn't be much use without the other feature, loops. You can take any set of instructions and you can slap a loop around them, making the robot repeat that code forever. A robot that makes a spade now becomes a robot that will continually make spades until the storage box is full. A robot that digs up one tile now becomes a robot that prepares an entire field. You can also change the loop's exit condition, and this is where things really open up. Let's consider this program, where the robot is told to pick up an axe and then chop down a tree. It'll run once, but then the program will stop. However, just by throwing a few loops in there, we can make this robot fully self-sufficient. It now picks up an axe whenever its hands are empty, and it then uses the axe for as long as its hands remain full, and the whole thing then repeats forever. You can get pretty creative with these loops. For example, this code does exactly the same thing, but it also uses the robot's backpack, meaning they'll need to run back and forth to the tool storage less often. But this kind of advanced coding is rarely necessary. You can do most of the actions in the game with a basic forever loop, or with the hands full, hands empty loop. Complex actions can then be achieved by combining lots of simple bots, each one just performing a small part of the whole. In fact, the game actively encourages this by placing some strict limitations on your bots. They can only hold one type of item in their hands at any given time, and there's a hard limit on how many instructions they can remember. This makes several simple bots much stronger than one complex bot, especially in the early game, and that's important because it lets non-programmers ease their way into the game's strategies. So, I used to play a lot of Minecraft, back in an era long past. I liked building mansions and castles, the bigger the better, but eventually I discovered a dark secret. Building a mansion that's twice as big as the last one requires roughly eight times as much labor, because volume is the cube of length. That's eight times as much digging, and eight times as much building. 
and this led to many hours of repetitive work. But in Autonauts, building something twice the size only requires you to reconfigure some of your bots. They'll then run around building it while you pour a cup of Earl Grey. It might still take a lot of time, since those bots do need time to carry everything around, but in terms of labour, you barely need to do anything extra. And this makes the game truly scalable in a way many other building games are not. And with a little lateral thinking, you can build a base that requires almost no human maintenance. At one point, I was spending loads of time running around recharging my bots. But then I realised you can program a bot to recharge your bots. And if you have two charge bots with the same search area, they can even charge each other. This doesn't make any sense from a thermodynamics perspective, but from a gameplay perspective, it's a nice touch. At another point, I was spending lots of time building a fleet of bots. But then I realised I could train my bots to build more copies of themselves. It's the circle of life. And later on, I was spending loads of time building crates, painfully carrying one log at a time. But then I realised you can program a team of bots to deliver all of your various building materials. You can even hook up their search range to a signpost that you can carry around to wherever they're needed. Thanks to the game's powerful automation tools, building a cool looking base is a breeze. All it takes is a little bit of creative coding. So, what can we learn? Let's be honest, programming isn't everybody's idea of fun. So getting people to try a game about programming can be a big ask. But Autonauts has several fresh ideas that help keep it both intuitive and fun. It leans on the base building genre for support. Chopping trees, farming wheat and milking cows are things that everybody understands, regardless of their technical background. You could say that building up your farm town is really the true goal of the game, and that the programming is just your tool set. The copy me programming style is also super intuitive. Many people don't have experience with writing code, but everybody has experience moving an avatar around a map. And the code the system writes for you is actually quite nuanced in some ways. Let's consider this simple program that searches for logs in a given area and then drops them in the log storage. It took me a little while to notice this, but this code contains an analog for variables. This search instruction would be a method that returns an object of type log and then stores it in a variable. And then this move instruction would resolve that variable's location property so that you can travel to it and pick it up. This is stuff that every programmer will be familiar with. But the cool thing is that the game doesn't require this kind of technical knowledge. Everyone can understand a natural language instruction like find a log in this area, meaning they can code with variables without even knowing what a variable is. And finally, the game uses parallelism as a fallback. There's no need to write one complex robot when three simpler bots will do the same task and do it faster. It's funny because parallel programming is often thought to be really difficult, and I'd be inclined to agree. But Autonauts shows that with the right metaphors, parallel programming can actually be very intuitive. In a way, these robots are like shadows of yourself. Everything you see a bot doing here is just something I did myself one time and then recorded it. It's sort of like that feature in Super Meat Boy where all of your past runs are overlaid on top of your successful run. Only, instead of flinging themselves to their deaths, your shadows are doing useful things. Chopping wood, growing wheat, and even replicating themselves. And so, in summary, Autonauts has three big ideas that help it make programming accessible to everyone. 1. Everything has a clear application to farming. This allows it to piggyback on the player's pre-existing knowledge from other base building games. Number two, it makes entering your code very easy. Just slap that record button and you'll start writing legal code. This takes a lot of the guesswork and trial and error out of getting to grips with a new language. And three, it uses parallelism to reduce the complexity of each of your individual programs. If a task is too hard for you to write, just split it up into pieces and get a separate bot to do each part. This way, it's easier to program each bot, and easier to see when one of them isn't working. Please let me know in the comments section what you think of Autonauts. 
Is the game really as intuitive as I'm letting on, or am I just trapped within my programmer bubble? I have more videos on the way, so remember to sub and ring the bell if you haven't already, and in recent weeks development has been moving very quickly for Patch Quest, my upcoming roguelike title where you explore a jungle and ride cute monsters. I'll be posting the next devlog episode soon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.